Overclocking has had an exotic image, but it's getting easier. An Intel application actually lets you overclock your chips from the desktop. Here at Computex, I'm learning how to do that. Overclocking is running your processor and memory at higher than their rated speed, so you get more performance. Professionals like these use liquid nitrogen to keep their chips from overheating while they push them faster and faster. And there are international competitions on sites like HWBot, which is running this one at Computex in Taipei, and thousands of people participate. And it turns out that getting started isn't so difficult. This computer has a more modest water cooling system, and the overclocking is done through a Windows app. Intel's extreme tuning utility lets you tweak and test to your heart's content. So I sat down and gave it a go. So the first thing we have to do when we're trying to overclock one of these computers is, is figure out where we're starting from. So we run, first of all, a benchmark to see, in its normal state, what the computer can do. The computer I'm using is already pretty powerful. It's running Intel's latest Core i7 processor, the 10-core Broadwell E. So the benchmark's complete and we're on 2142. And now comes the fun part to try to push the chip to run faster. At first that means you need to give it more voltage because without the extra power it'll crash. Okay. And, and then you turn it up so it runs faster. But you've got to be careful not to overheat the chip. So I've increased the core voltage for the processor from about a volt to 1.3 volts. And we've increased the multiplier to 42 times instead of 35. That means that in theory we're running now at 4.2 gigahertz instead of 3.5 gigahertz. Uh, the multiplier works with the clock speed on the board. It's 100 megahertz times the multiplier. So 100 times 42, 4.2 gigahertz. It all sounds complicated, but I soon got the hang of it. Could getting extra performance really be this simple? Turns out it is. 2577, that means more performance with just a few clicks. So I kept adjusting, and the number kept rising. 2608, more points. And then I flew too close to the sun. Knock this up another notch to a 45 multiplier, 4.5 gigahertz. And let's see how we do this time. <laughs> and we didn't get very far at all. It didn't even start. <laughs> But giving up isn't on the cars, you just start messing with something else. In this case, I bumped up the clock speed and more performance. That's a new record for me, 2717. But by now, the blue screens of death were becoming a more regular occurrence. So we had our second blue screen at a 45 multiplier. And here's our third blue screen at 44. I'd entered the zone where skill and experience started to take over from my amateur luck but I'd done pretty well to this point, and I've had fun. My 4.44 gigahertz was still way off the record 5.7 gigahertz for this chip, but hey, it's a start. Now, this won't work on every PC. Computers from major brands often can't be overclocked. You'll need a compatible motherboard and an unlocked processor. Uh, it, with Intel, that's one that ends in a K or an X. You'll also discover that no two chips are the same, and this is pretty interesting. It's all down to the small differences in the silicon and the manufacturing process. They don't show up at their advertised speeds, but when you push the chips to the limits, you'll find some run faster and some just crash. All right, now it's back to work. Let's see if I can push this chip to go even faster. Yeah.